What's up, what's up? Welcome back for another recap video. I know this one's coming out a little late, but I did have some things to do on Friday. Did not have time to do a recap video, but here we are recapping the day. Um, Friday was December 1st, so the first of the month. Um, and I ended green, so green day on the 1st of December. Trading HCDI. That was the primary one that I traded today, or not today, yesterday. Um, we can take a look here at the statistics. So ending up three, 348, 340 after commissions um, with this nice solid accuracy, 50% accuracy. So a little bit lighter uh, on the accuracy. Um, usually my sweet spot's around 55 to 60 but my average risk reward was very nice, um, almost two to one. So right where we needed to be. My largest winner was $108. My largest loss was only $50. So looking great there. And overall, a uh, pretty decent day. Um, we did have uh, the stock ALT and HCDI, HCDI. So ALT was the one pre-market that was really making a nice, nice move. Um, so ALT, uh, going from 460 up to six. And this was looking good. However, there was a lot of people saying that there, there was a shelf um, off, not a shelf offering, but a potential for liquidation. So it looks like that did keep longs away. Um, and this thing uh, just started dumping right out of the open. I was trying to catch dips, just trying to catch dips and then recycling shares lower. Um, but we never really got that significant pop. Um, and then I ended up, that $50 loss was on ALT. Um, was right around this area, around 540. I was looking for it to hold off of this level here and coinciding with VWAP. I thought that we'd find some pretty decent support there. Um, but we, we didn't hold at all. And I ended up taking a 10 cent loss. But, you know, it was all good though because... Um, the risk reward was there. You know, I was risking 10 cents, but the potential from 540 could have been, you know, 20 cents, 30 cents or more, um, especially in the hot market that we've been having. So it's really good, um, you know, that I was able to manage my risk on the stock. I was only down, uh, we can pull up my, I think I did post a picture here. So on the day I was for ALT, I think I accidentally went short as well. So this was, yeah, I actually went short there. So that was a mistake of my $2.50 mistake there. Um, but yeah, I was up like 60 bucks and then I gave back. So I gave back like 70 bucks off the top on ALT, uh, putting me right on the name. And I pretty much left it alone from there just because it was just backside really, really hard. Um, uh, that's definitely something good to keep in mind is researching, you know, potential, you know, shelf offering or any shares on shelf um, just to be aware of. Because that could influence whether or not there's going to be momentum on it, uh, because if there's a potential for an offering, high potential for an offering, uh, the bulls are going to be a lot more passive or a lot more defensive, uh, not as aggressive on the stock. Uh, CMND, I think I took like a small scalp on that one. Not really worth going over. HCDI was my main one up over 300 on that one. Nexi, NEXI, this one I traded pre-market was up $65 pre-market as shown in the pre-market pump live stream. And for those of you who are not familiar, I have been doing live streams pre-market. We call it the pre-market pump where we get pumped for the market. We're doing the stocks on the day, maybe doing some live trading. Um, and that was it for the rest of the day. NLS, NLSP, I had a small scalp on that one as well. Uh, but <coughs> um, Nexi, let's take a look at Nexi. This one, this one was halted by the exchange at around 8.30. Uh, this was really strong right at 7 a.m., coinciding with the very hot momentum that we've been getting this week. Um, so this was just riding right off the coattails with that. Um, you know, super hot, very aggressive. And I was kind of taking some small trades um, off the lows in this area. 
I did miss the break of seven. I was trying to hit my hockeys, break a seven, break a seven, but I just didn't get filled for some reason. And then on the dip, I had 600 shares. 600 shares at 770. All right, 770 at the low, and I cut it for break even. I cut it for break even. I thought this was going to come down lower. This is a strong candle. I thought we were going to dip more. I thought it was extended. You know, we just made a move from four all the way up to seven. We haven't had a red candle. I thought we were going to pull back more. Man, I missed that opportunity. I was able to get some small green on it. Um, I think like in this area, you know, scalping off the lows. Uh, but then it got halted. I wasn't in it, thank God. I know some people who are stuck in this thing for a couple hours. And it was halted because of, this is what's called a T12 halt. So T12 is when NASDAQ, the actual exchange, halts the stock because it's trying to get news to account for the move. And so it pretty much halts all trading. I don't know why they do this. They really should keep it trading. You know, There's no reason why they have to stop the trading. They really can keep the trading going, and then while it's still trading, the exchange could reach out to the company and ask to publish some news or to at least you know try to reason with them about how why the stock is moving because there was no news on it. Um, and so let's take a look. Nexi, Nexi, Nexi. So it got notice from NASDAQ on listing qualifications. So really no news. There's no news to account for the move pretty much. Um, yeah, I'm just reviewing the news in here. But um, yeah, no news to account for the move. And this is why trading is risky. Because you could have bought this dip and been stuck. And you're taking, you're literally taking a 50% haircut on that position. That is the risk of trading. I know some people got stuck in that, and that's quite unfortunate. And that is just, just the law of statistics. We're trading thousands and thousands of times every year. Statistically, the chances of getting stuck on this at the exact moment that it gets halted, depending on your hold time, I guess it, I guess it depends, but probably less than 1%, the chance that you actually get caught in one of these there was another one a couple months ago that got halted and it actually got delisted um, I forget the name of that one uh, but somebody got caught in that one as well and pretty much took an 80% haircut the chances of that are less than 1% but because we take thousands and thousands and thousands of trades every year there's bound to be one or two trades every year or once every two years that you get caught in something like this and you take a 50% or an 80% loss on your position. So the important part is to, are you gonna be able to bounce back from something like this? Because really it's not your fault. Really none of that, that's just, that is just the luck of the draw. Sometimes it's just the luck of the draw and there's nothing you could have done if you were stuck in this. Um, so, you know, are you going to be somebody who's going to wallow in your self-pity and, you know, feel down about yourself that you just were so unlucky then you took a 50% haircut? Yeah, okay, maybe for 5 or 10 minutes or 30 minutes. But, you know, after that, you know, it's, it's, back, it's back to square one. It's like, let's go. Let's rebuild. Let's get back on the horse and we recover. And that's the attitude that you have to have. You know, sometimes you're going to, you know, eventually everyone's going to get caught in something like this. You know, it's just a matter of time. You know, if you're trading for 10 years, you know, it's got to be one or two trades where you're just going to get caught in a T12 halt and lose 50% of your position. You better hope it's not a full-size position. But, you know, either way, you know, it's totally, you're totally able to bounce back from something like this. Let's say I had 1,000 shares. Like, that's kind of like the normal share size I'd be using in something like this. Maybe, let's say, 2,000. At most, I would lose... I would lose about a thousand dollars. I would lose about a thousand dollars if I had two thousand shares in this position. Um, as of right now, that seems to be like a normal share size. If, if I was in full size, um, with my level of trading right now, and you know, let's say I'm down a thousand, I, I take a thousand dollar loss. I can I can make that back. You know, I can make that back in a couple weeks. You know, of consistent green days, 
you know, not trying to swing for the fences, not shooting, you know, not going for the Hail Mary pass because I took a thousand dollar loss. I'm trying to make it back. Um, you know, it just comes back to like, you're back to square one. Let's start rebuilding slowly. And, you know, before you know it, after a couple of weeks, you're going to, you know, be halfway out of your drawdown, three quarters out of your drawdown, and eventually be back to all time highs. And so that's how you have to view it. Uh, and this is, this is the point of, in risk management that's important. You should never be have your full account in a position ever because something like this, you can wipe out half your account. And maybe that in that situation, it may take months, if not a whole year, to make back. So it's good, you know, that you're managing your risk appropriately. Um, but yeah, something like this is bound to happen to all of us, for those of us who are trading for the long haul, that we're in it for... You know, we're in it for, for life. You know, we're, tra we're traders. That's who we are. Those people, you know, eventually we're going to get caught in something like this. So we just got to be ready when it does happen um, and be ready to bounce back. Thank God I was not caught in this one. But, you know, doesn't mean I won't get caught in the next one. So, you know, it's it's good that, you know, you're aware of that and you got to be, you know, prepared and uh, have that mental fortitude to keep moving forward no matter how many setbacks that you have. Uh, so ne Nexi was was atrocious. Um, I didn't trade this after pre-market. Um, I think it unhalted around like what, two, two o'clock? Yeah, I was long gone. Um, but yeah, I was able to sc scrape some green pre-market on that one. Uh, there's nothing showing there. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, that was pretty much the day, up 340. After commissions, we can take a look at the um, insights page. By the way, this is Trade Journal. Check that out. The link will be in the description. You guys can sign up for free. Unlimited imports from straight from TD Ameritrade. If you're using TD Ameritrade, Webull, uh, there's a whole bunch of other brokers that you can use with this as well. Yeah, unlimited unlimited imports. You don't get this in TraderView, TraderSync. You don't get that in TraderView or TraderSync. They only give you 30 trades to upload a month for free. That's that's ridiculous. That's not what we do. Here at Trade Journal is unlimited uploads, unlimited imports for free. We give it for free. Everyone should have an opportunity to analyze their trades. And it really gives everybody a fair opportunity to succeed in trading without putting so much money up front. So check it out. Trade Journal is a great resource to have. The link will be in the description. Uh, anyways, let's take a look. So over a 1K week, so I rarely have a 1K week. So you know, this is great sign of improvement. Great sign of improvement. Looks like my trading volume on the week was at all-time highs, which is also good. You know, that means that I'm leaning into it, uh, into the momentum. Um, so that's very, very good. Uh, intraday. You know, definitely towards the higher ends um, on the week. That's also great to see. Um, on the month was a subpar month, up one thirteen hundred dollars um, subpar. But you know, moving in the right direction. You know, the beginning of November is a little s slow, so I didn't really start picking up till the last week. And hopefully, this continues for December. Hopefully, December could be another great uh, knockout month. And maybe I can really, you know, start making some some better profits uh, like I had been just this past week. You know, if that could happen every week, that would be great. Uh, but, you know, we'll see what we'll see what comes um, today after the Nexi uh, T12 halt. I noticed the momentum started to be a little bit weaker. Um, the momentum started to be a little bit weaker. Uh, but we did have HCDI, which is those the one that I made my 300 on, and I was pretty much just sizing into breakouts. So I was sizing into breakouts or classic breakout trades. Um, the dips are very unreliable on this one. Uh, the dips, you know, were not holding up. So breakouts are definitely favorable on HCDI. So uh, yeah, I was able to yeah pretty much take get the breakouts to the high with with the trades that I took. Um, but I'm I'm not going to go through the the archives. On the year, we have one month left. I'm pretty much right in line with what I was doing last year, but it's okay. You know, it's it's great because so last year I made about fifteen thousand eight hundred. 
this year I'm up 14,400. So I'm 1,400 off the last year's target or last year's profit, which is fine. You know, I'm not wallowing, uh, you know, disappointed that, you know, I'm not, doesn't, I'm not profit, the profits are not improving, but I feel like my risk management has really improved as a trader this year, just because there was a lot of lack of opportunities in the market this year compared to last year. And for me to come out with just the same amount of profit this year as last year, I think that's a serious, I think that's a great improvement because this year you really had to be a lot more patient and you had to avoid a lot of the riskier setups that were just not working out. And a lot of the times there would only be one solid trade every day and you'd have to wait, you know, two, three hours for that trade and you'd have to nail it or else you'd be break even or red on the day. And, you know, for me, you know, being able to manage my risk through the chop, uh, not getting into a drawdown and waiting for that equality setup and then hitting it and then pretty much just getting out of the market. You know, I think I did very well with that, uh, with that approach and able to walk away so far, you know, with uh, almost the exact same profit that I had uh, last year. But we still have one month left. So we have one month left. The momentum is good. You know, anything can happen. So I'm open to anything. Uh, that the market gives and I'm always trying to trade my best every single day. I'm trying to perform at my best at every single day. Um, and that's the attitude that you have to have. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, next week we'll see. Uh, Monday I'm going to come in. be very. I'm going to be very hands off on Monday just because the momentum seemed to be a little weak after the, um, the Nexi T12 halt. So we'll see how the momentum is on Monday. I'll kind of wait to see signs of momentum before I start trading aggressively into the highs or, you know, aggressively in big size on dips or anything like that. Uh, but I will be doing another pre-market. Keep doing. I'm going to keep doing those pre-market pumps. So tune in around 830. You know, we'll do a pre-market pump from 830 to 930. Hope to see you guys there. Um, so I'm super excited. Those things are super fun. I love interacting with you guys in the community. Check out the Discord link down in the description. Thanks for tuning in. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button for me. And I will catch you guys on Monday. Have a great rest of your weekend. Peace.